Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new playthrough. Uh, this time it's going to be Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape. And uh, I played a, a bit of Massive Darkness, the original one. I played quite a bit of it when it came out. And uh, there's a lot of ties rules-wise uh, connecting Zombie Side and uh, Cthulhu Death May Die and other CMOD games that culminate into this fantasy dungeon quest type of adventure. But in this game, they've done some really cool different things. And you probably, maybe you've seen some videos on it. Uh, maybe you haven't. But either way, I'm going to talk through some things first. And then we're going to do, this is the tutorial mission. This is going to be an episode where I'm teaching myself to play. I'm doing something a little different this time. I have not played this at all. I haven't even test, tested a round of it. I've read the rules and I've watched some videos on, on how-tos. Thank you everybody who did a video before me. I watched so many, I can't name any. But uh, I just... And I'm probably going to get some some things wrong in this, but I wanted to show you my process of kind of teaching myself how to play this game. Um, and there's some really super cool things that they've done in this game. This may end up being one of my more favored dungeon crawler game, games. And one of those things that they did is that the, the characters are extremely uh, asymmetric. In other words, they, they all have really cool different completely different mechanics throughout the multiple character types that you can play. I'm not talking about the individual characters, I'm talking about their character classes. I believe with if you have everything, which I do, I got all in, um, there's ten, I believe, classes in the game. Uh, we're going to look at two of them today. One of them I've seen a lot of in other videos uh, from a class perspective, and that's the Ranger. But another one I haven't seen a ton of, and that's the Berserker. So we're going to have uh, those two classes, and I'm going to run through this... Um, this original, this just a tutorial scenario, and then I'm going. I think I'm going to play a campaign, and I want your feedback on that. So I'm asking up front: Would you want to see a the, one of the campaigns run in this? Uh, there's a, a couple of big campaign boxes that have an ongoing storyline, and uh, you manage your experience a little differently, so you don't level up as fast. Things like that. I haven't read through it all yet, but uh, there's several. And I also, in this particular session, have not included anything from the other boxes. Of stuff not, like none of the monster boxes. Uh, obviously, there's additional classes in the other boxes, like tinkers and bards, and druids and and things like that. So um, we're going to just explore what's some some stuff out of the base box for this learning session, because I think that's the right way to go, right? I mean, obviously, they gave you characters that you could learn more easily from. Now, I almost did play the rogue because the rogue has an interesting mechanic as well, and that they draw their draw for their actions out of this cool bag, and it gives them some additional mechanics, and that's one of the things I really, really like about the game, actually, so far, in reading it, is how these different characters play so differently, and it's just so much replayability in that, right? So, like, even in this tutorial mission, I could play a couple of different characters. Now, because there are so many videos, I'm not going to get into the rules uh, too much, uh, like, in the setup and everything. I've got it set up. It's ready to go. Um, there's not really anything to, to do there. You can see, uh, I'll show you as we talk about our characters for a moment, uh, some of the basics of setup, like there, you know, there is a basic setup for the the loot bag, for example. There's, um, I think, four, uh, five rather rare tokens and ten common item tokens in there. And as monsters come out, we'll be seeing those tokens. You can see that there is, when we open this door, we will see that there is a treasure in there or a loot item in there. And of course, mobs come with their own type of loot items that you can abscond from them and use to fight. Um, and then. As we level up, which I'll talk about in just a second, we are going to be adding cool loot tokens to the bag as well. As you'll see loot tokens come in from the darkness track as well, and all, as well as roaming monsters and things of that nature. So yeah, and then again in this tutorial mission, we don't. There's um, yeah, it's interesting. There's not a lot that we have to do. We just have to get to the uh, to get the tokens that we need. I think I may have one of the tokens in the wrong place. I think I bumped it when I set it up. I want to double check. I do, I do. This token actually belongs here. Okay, because this room is not relevant to the scenario, we're going to come in here and we're going to run around through there, right? That's the way it goes. Now, like I said, you've probably seen this a bunch of times, but I'm going to talk through my, my learning process of this and see. Uh, let you help me in the next video before I play like a campaign or something get it right. Now, uh, it is uh, middle, it, well, it's not the middle of summer, it's the beginning of summer here in Texas, and we are having a whopper, like, it's hot. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a bunch of breaks to turn the air conditioner back on and cool the place down. It's kind of crazy. I don't want the, it's really loud, so it would disrupt my videos. Um, but, uh, yeah, here we go. And if you didn't notice, I did, I, I was playing a game just recently called Tales from the Loop. Um, 
And I, I think I'm going to do a follow-up video on my feelings on the game because I think there's some really amazing mechanics in it. Um, and and uh, there's also some things uh, that I was like, I don't know if that works for me or not, such as not having a, uh, a the goal of the story you kind of unfold. That's cool that it unfolds, but in some ways I'm like, I feel a little lost, even though I know what I was, knew what I was doing. So you probably saw that if you watched the last video. I was feeling a little out of sorts with it, like, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? I get it, I think. Okay, but you don't really know. Anyway, but we're not here to do that. We're here to play uh, Massive Darkness 2. So let's get started. First, I'm going to touch on my characters, and then we're going to get going. Okay, so for our character, you see here that we are going to go with Gita. Gita is this miniature right here. I think she's like an orc or something. Um, and I, yes, I know, I need to paint them. I need to paint everything. It's just crazy. There's not enough time. I did get speed paints, and I've been painting um, Town Folk Tussle right now. So I'll probably get to this one next. I'm not sure. Either that or do some more Marvel United miniatures. I'm not sure. But regardless of that, what we have here is Gita. She is a bar uh, like kind of a barbarian, I would guess. And i got to get her, her tokens out. I'll do that as we go. Um, she has a, one ability. It's within her shadow ability. Her ability is attack. Uh, she can take one wound to deal one wound to the defender. Uh, so she that's one of her abilities and, and, and shadows. If we get the shadow, the shadow symbol, I, I think that's what that's called. Uh, she can gain... A three um, rage uh, and heals three for ourselves only. Rage is, is the re resource that we spend, and I'll talk about how we spend that in a minute, so that's pretty cool. But she does have five health and a, a whopping, I think, one mana, right? One man or two mana to use. And uh, abilities and things do use mana. Like even her abilities will end up using some mana, and you'll see that in a second. Or maybe you won't, because I don't think I have anything that uses mana currently, though we will find things. Okay, um, for her. Uh, so that is Gita. She's going to be our big giant berserker that's going to attack uh, enemies furiously. I'm going to talk about her capabilities over here in a minute. And these are the starting items. You get to pick one starting weapon, and then everybody gets a starting armor. So she's starting with a crude axe that is two-handed. The reason I picked the crude axe over a one-handed weapon is it does an orange die. Orange die is better than the yellow die. So... And so, I mean, she's going to be able to hit harder, and with her abilities, even harder. So, and then we have uh, the battered leather armor, and uh, it says five to six years. I don't think it matters, but um, she gets one defense there. I don't know why it says that. It's supposed to, you're supposed to, everybody's supposed to get a battered piece of battered leather armor. Are they different at lower levels? I don't know. Hmm. Doesn't say so. So I'm going to go with it. So anyway, we have the battered leather armor there. Oh, it says, I don't know what that means, that five to six heroes thing. So this is, again, learning, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll look that up, but I, I know they get the armor because it says so. Uh, and then um, talking about the abilities, they also get one item, one other item, a potion item, which I took health potion for Gita. And then if you look over here, this is the special mechanic for the Berserker. Now, when the Berserker takes damage, instead of just taking it off the board for a moment, we're going to place it in here. And you can see that you have a max of seven. I can also take a damage to change our stance. Now, um, how that works is when I do have things over here, which means she's getting wounded, by the way, which is not great, I can then spend things to activate the abilities. So, like if in the case right now I have it marked on Blood Rage, I have the special ability in Blood Rage. For one of those, I can, I can get a reroll, or because I have this skill of Blood Rage, I can get an a plus one yellow die on my attack instead. But again, I have to spend um, one of the, the rage tokens out of here, which is health, to do that. Now, as we go, you can see that the, if I can go reckless, which gives us a move, a plus one movement. At this point, one, a movement point, which is different than and taking an action. You get two movement points in one action. And then also this uh, provoke, it says when I'm defending, I can deal one wound to the attacker. So that means I can get just a free deal one wound. They don't. I don't think they, they don't get to defend against it or anything. Just one wound. But I, again, I have to be suffering damage to do that. And as you can see, Gita's special ability kind of helps with that. If I do get the shadow effect, I can gain three of the three tokens in the rage. But that doesn't mean I'm adding them to like when when I use them, I'm not going to add them or add them back into my pool for health. They're just going to go away. And I can heal three. And again, that's for myself only. So there's some ways for her to mitigate taking damage and using her abilities. And, of course, there are multiple skills. You know, there's a whole stack of skills for the Berserker. This is the one I chose. There are others. I'm not going to look at the others right now. It says level 1. 
And this is the one I chose specifically because, I mean, we need a, a pretty heavy damage dealer. We don't have any magic use in this, this out of the pair. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go. now. This, so that's the mechanics of the Berserker. Now, eventually I will have, as we level up, I'll get other skills and we'll be able to do more with this. Uh, but that's the current layout and how that works. Now, one thing I did want to point, you see these up here. Uh, as we gain levels, now when you gain five experience, you spend it. So that means it's not really five and then ten, it's five and it's a total of fifteen to get the level three uh, experience points. Um, you get one for your, for killing things, you get an additional bonus for killing the, the leader of a mob, and then you get some additional things for doing other stuff like picking up tokens. We'll see level ups for sure. Okay, so when we get there, you see that we get uh, mag another health point, so we're going to go to eight, but we also get to put in this common item into the treasure bag. doesn't mean we get the treasure. It goes in the bag, so we have more options. Okay, let's go on to our other character. And this one, I, I think it's pronounced Nahias, or Nahias, Nahias, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and Nahias is, I think, it is a centaur. I don't know, I think it's a guy. It looks like a guy. It's hard to tell. So I'm going to call him him, unless someone tells me different. Um, it's a ranger. And the ranger has these ammo cards, and what you're trying to do with them when you're attacking is you're trying to, you're going to get special bonuses based on uh, having seven or less. Now, if you get exactly seven, you get the super cool ability. If you get anywhere underneath, between one and seven, you're going to do this. And if you go over seven, you're going to actually hurt yourself. So you're going to draw cards until you stop. It's kind of a press your luck thing on the archery thing, uh, with the uh, on the attack rather. Now, um, one of the cool things about that is you can see, I, so I gave Nahias the short bow. Short bow is, again, a two-handed weapon, but it does it can be used in melee, and nah, not so good, but it can also be used as archery, which means line of sight. Line of sight can be any straight path you can, you can draw to an enemy without uh, doors or walls or anything in the way. Okay, And again, suit of leather armor for defense. Uh, now, um, that, that mechanic is so simple, right? It's pretty cool, but so different than the Berserker, and that's what I wanted to show off in this. And, of course, I took a health potion for um, Nahias as well. And then you can see that, once again, we got two mana, though I don't know what the mana use would be for this character yet, and uh, five health. So there is that. Now, obviously, different mechanics completely. No ability or no reason to spend health to fuel abilities. Now... Uh, normal abilities is because Nahias is a centaur, gets plus one movement, and Nahias' shadow ability is that we get to draw and discard one arrow card and apply the, I think the moderate effect is what that is, if I'm not mistaken, right? The, oh no, we get to apply the top effect, that's pretty cool, all right, well, I'll take it, I will take it. So I'm going to, now remember, you're also rolling dice with this, you're just not, not applying the effects from the cards, so I'm going to give them another quick shuffle. And, and the experience track, there was these, these tokens were in there. I thought maybe they were different for some reason. I was looking to see the, they change depending on how many players you have. They don't. They're all the same. And then here's the tokens for that. This is their player token. When I activate, I will flip it. Okay. Let's get going. Okay. Now, if you look right up here, you see this really nice acrylic tray holding all my cards. So before you ask where that came from, I'm going to tell you that was actually part of the Kickstarter and is designed specifically for Massive Darkness 2 because there are a lot of cards in Massive Darkness 2. And you can see the trays are deep. They can hold a lot. And there's there's cards I have in there that I wouldn't normally need put in there. If we were actually playing, I'd put them back in the box. But I just put them up there because it look cool. And that's uh, that's I want to explain that. Now, okay, we're going to get started with our first turn. Let's talk about the, the, the uh, mission real quick that we're going to do on. Again, this is a tutorial mission, so it's not going to be too crazy. There's not much of a story to it. It just says, Quest Tutorial, Welcome to Massive Darkness 2. This quest provides newcomers a glimpse of the darkness as awaits them. You see that we have the tile set up. Our objectives is uh, we're going to... Um, we need to gather the ritual school. We need to close the rift, destroying the rift. Okay. Now, I fixed one thing. I had this on the gray side. It needs to be on the colored side, and I'll explain why. The scroll, in order to close the rift, heroes will need uh, the scroll, which is represented by the color side up objective token. Any hero uh, may spend one man, uh, movement point standing in the objective zone, token zone, to gather the scroll. Take the token as a reminder. All heroes gain five experience points. Well, then we got to go to this gray token to close the rift. Close the, any hero holding the scroll may spend one action, full action, not movement point, while standing on the gray, on the gray objective token to destroy the rift. And that's how we went. Again, tutorial, not crazy, right? Just the tutorial zone. So, uh, in getting started, we're going to start with um, our. Uh, I think we're going to start with Nia Nahias because Nahias 
has the ability of an extra movement point. I think it's going to be valuable right here. We'll see. We'll see. So what, what heroes can do. So we're going to start with hero phase. It's real simple. They get three actions. Within those actions, if they move, they get two movement points. In the case of Nahias, Nahias gets three. And uh, they get to, they can attack, they can move, they, we can trade and equip, we can recover, which means we get some health back, or we can take a special action. There's special actions in the game that we might want to take. But we're not going to do that. We're going to start with our move. So we're going to first, we're going to select in the highest. Now, when you're playing solo, you just get to pick who you want to, which hero goes next. Um, and then you go around. So it's okay. Uh, we're going to pick the highest. The highest is going to take for her, his first of three actions, a move action. We're going to move one. That's one movement point. We get three. The second movement point is going to be to open the door. Um, oops, I already, yeah, I was testing something out and I already did that. Sorry, that's my bad. I, this actually was a, one of these tokens. I'll just, I'll play like we didn't, I didn't already pull that out of the bag. I was just checking something to make sure I did the, the first turn right on before I went back to filming. Um, anyway, we drew a rare item out of the bag, and that's what happened. Okay, so uh, it's sitting there. We know it's there because we've seen it. We're also are going to do that, but before we do that, and this is what I was backtracking on, I almost forgot this part of the game because I wanted to fight the mob in there. I was so excited about it. So our second movement point of three, we have to draw a door card when we open the door to a room for the first time. Now, because this is an ongoing hallway, if we open this door, we're not going to draw another door card. So this, there's only going to be one door card draw in this short tutorial adventure. All right, let's see what we get. We get Frozen Chamber, the active hero, and all mobs spawned in this chamber take one frozen uh, um, condition. And we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's look at the frozen condition. Uh, frost. Frost condition um, is whenever a miniature or mob would perform an action, remove the, a frost token from it. Instead, roaming monsters re require two frost tokens to lose their entire activation. Bosses uh, take frost tokens, but when they activate they remove all frost tokens so basically when I move everybody when I move into the room to reveal that mob I'm going to get a frost token they look like this and that is going to consume uh, one of my full actions right is that what it says uh, yeah so I'm only going to end up with ooh that's rough that's rough but the, the same thing happens to them too so that's okay monsters get two actions so the question is do I want to spend my third point to go into the room let's reveal the mob first and then we'll see I haven't gone into the room yet. It says the active hero and all mobs spawned in this chamber take one. So I guess the active hero does get the frost token right now. But I still have one more movement point left to go. And then I would, I could, I'm not sure what I want to do here with this. But again, let's let's draw out the mob and see what we get. I'm going to shuffle this up and see what we get. We get undead. Oh, that's uh, suitable. Um, I had to... Got to get the undead out. Now, one of the things that I find very interesting about the game is I, I have a hard time telling who the leaders are. Now, in the, in, in the undead one, it's a little easier to tell. Actually, before we do that, we also have to draw an item card for this mob. So let's get that out and see what the mob item is going to be. Then I'll go over the mob stats real quick. We're going to have a primeval club. And now, there's a couple things on here that I want to share with you. So first off, this is going to get slipped onto the card like this. Now we're not. This this ability only applies when we pick it up as a hero, uh, but the mob is going to have one treasure on it. We'll draw that out. Uh, it, each of the mob units has four. There's going to be two. There's going to be two minions and one boss. The, the minions are related to um, the uh, amount of players, um, and then the leader has this mace and is going to end up doing an extra yellow die in the attack. Now, when they attack, if they roll a claw symbol on their on their attack die, they're going to get a plus one yellow and this mob will take two wounds, so they kind of hurt themselves as they shamble along, I guess. Uh, now, when we do collect this, this is a one-handed weapon, this is attack. If you took at least one wound in this attack, deal one wound to the defender. That might be a really good item for Gita, even though it would reduce her down to a, a yellow instead of an orange. So let's, uh, let's first get our mobs out. So we're going to have a couple of undead guys. Let's see, I think... Uh, it is these two here, I believe. No, those don't look like undead to me. Let's find some undead. I think it's these guys. Yeah, here they go. Here's the two undead from the mob. Now i got to go find the boss to them. Now remember, they do have a frost token on their sheet, so I'm going to put that up here. We also have to draw a thing from the bag, but I want to get their, their leader out. And um, there he is. Now he's, he's really easy to spot because he looks very specific. Some of the other ones don't because you can see it in the in the thing he's got these two big giant swords so there's their leader and he is there ready to do, deal us some damage 
Now, we are also then going to draw a treasure token from the bag that will go on their cart. So when we defeat them, we get this a treasure of this type. What do we get? A common item. That is great. Uh, common items are fine. They do a lot, actually. It could be armor. It could be any number of things in the common item deck. We'll have to see. Okay, that was our first action. Now, I have a movement point left. I also have an action, but I'm going to lose one action. See, I thought maybe I could duck in here, shoot him, and run away. Maybe not. So, I think I... I I, the frost action. The frost says next time I take an action, I will lose uh, my points. So let's think about that for just a second. It says whenever a miniature or mob would perform an action. So I'm already in the middle of my action. I have one more movement point. I guess I could run in as it's slowing me down. But then if I attack, I'm going to get attacked back for sure. I don't know if that matters that much. I don't think. I mean, we're going to spawn probably another set of monsters that will come after us. But if we move quickly. Um, uh, actually, out of that portal up there, if we move quickly, we might be able to get away with it. There also could be a wandering monster, right? I think that's what that is, actually, a wandering monster. Um, okay, well, do I spend that extra movement point to go in there, or do I not? Let's do it. We're going to go crazy. This is a tutorial, probably not too tough. Our last movement point goes in there. Now, she goes to draw back her bow, but the frost hits her, and she can't quite get it, so we're going to remove the frost token for action number two. And she shakes it off, or he shakes it off, cracks the ice off, and breaks the ice off the bow and gets ready to do an attack. Now we're going to attack this mob. Now each, each member of the mob has four hit points. We have to kill the two minions before we get to kill the, um, the boss. Now the cool thing is we are attacking at range, and they do not have a ranged attack. So uh, they're not going to be able to hurt us back very easily, which is good, though they, they can do. So basically the yellow die, the yellow melee die from the boss isn't going to matter, but we are still going to be rolling this uh, along with it and their defense die. Well, they don't have a defense die. Oh, well, that's awesome. So no defense for them. <laughs> we just do damage, but they got a lot of hit points. So we're going to, when we attack, we're going to build a dice pool. Now, in the case of our archer, our ranger, highest, we're also going to be drawing arrow cards. Okay, now let's see if I get this right. Now, we got the archer here, so we're going to draw uh, cards. Let's start doing that now. I got this shuffled up pretty nicely, but we're going to shuffle up a little bit more. Draw our first card. It's got four arrows on it, which means if I keep that, I'm going to get plus two mana. Do I want to push my luck? Because this could end up with minus one mana. I do not have my shadow die in there because I am not in a shadow space. I, do I do I take take a chance and say this one's going to be a three or less? Let's do it. Oh, exactly. Look at that. Four, five, six, seven, plus two to attack, plus one on the shadow ability, though I don't think I get that because I am not in shadows. Uh, but it says, draw and discard one arrow card, apply the uh, best bonus. I don't believe I get that, because I am not in shadows. But I will get this, plus two to my attack. Okay, now let's assemble our dice pool. So, first off, there are two minions in the pool, so we're going to have two of those. Now, because the uh, boss, his yellow die, um, is, uh, is a melee attack, he will not have this. We are doing a ranged attack. However, we will have one. And they do not have a defense die, which is interesting. So we're just going to wallop on them, I, I take it. But we have to do a lot of damage, right? So remember, uh, this is my third action. And in that action, I'm just going to get the one attack. So we're, we're going to be stuck there with them. Hopefully, Gita can come in and take them down. We'll see, I hope. Uh, but let's roll. I think this is right. I can't see any other reason why we would roll any other dice. Hmm. I'm concerned about that, but I'm not going to be. Okay, so first off, we're going to roll uh, our dice and see what comes up here. So we got this. That means it, it's a damage. We will take a damage. Even though we are ranged, we will take a damage from the mob. Uh, and, but we did not get a claw. I don't have a re-roll in here, do I? I just get plus two. So this is going to... Basically, what we're going to do is three points. Not enough to kill one of them, but three points and a uh, mana. But we're going to take a hit as well. I'm going to double-check the damage and make sure I do take that hit from that claw. Uh, let me check that first. Again, this is my learning experience, y'all, so I'm sure you're going, oh, I already know what to do, but I don't, so I'm going to check it out. Okay, so the uh, yeah, the, the undead captain would not have rolled a die anyway because he's not attacking, he's defending, so this is just our die. But I don't have any re-rolls or anything, but I do get that plus two. And this, I guess, that, that doesn't help us much. or Because um, I guess with the arrow die, I still have to be in shadows to get that. I would think I would have to be because it's the shadow ability. I don't know, because if I didn't, it would definitely, I would get that, and it would probably kill something, or do something. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. That's, I think there's a nuance there. I wonder if it says anything in the Rangers sheet here. I'm going to take a look. Also, you know, one of the things I think is interesting about this game versus the last one is that ranged attacks don't really seem to do... I mean, it doesn't seem to matter, right? I mean, it's great that you don't have to be all the way at the end of the board to attack them. Like, you could be all the way down a hallway and attack them. But they can still, like, I guess, pick up garbage and throw it at you and kill you with it because um, you're going to take damage anyway. That part, I, I'm a little un... I, I know that's the way it works. I'm just unclear on the mechanic of it, like, why they choose that. Um, I think it probably would have been better just to make, like, ranged attacks weaker than melee attacks so that so that they could plink away at monsters, but it was harder for them to kill them at, at range, right? Um, and uh, I don't think it does say anything. I'm looking at the ranger's uh, sheet here, and I don't see anything that would suggest that that's the case. I'm, I'm trying to look at it, the ranger, ranger, ranger. Uh, see, it just says, if you get the exact bullseye, the ranger is, hits precisely, but it doesn't say anything about that ability. Like, there's no, like, FAQs. Hey, if you got this, this is what happens. I think I hit a, a snag in the works already. I'm going to say that we wouldn't get that because we're not in shadows. I'm going to just play it that way. If I'm wrong, uh, please let me know. But we're supposed to be in shadows to get that ability, and then we're not. So we do, however, do three points of damage to... Uh, the undead. Now that didn't kill one of the mobs, unfortunately, and we take one point of damage, so we're now at four. So again, I don't know what the true value of ranged attacks are anymore. There we go, we're at four points of damage. Okay, but let's, oh wait, wait, I get a defense die, don't I? Well, uh, I don't, I can't block these, you can't block this, so you can only block these. And I do get an extra mana, though I don't know what the value of that is to me yet either. Um, have to get used to the character and see. All right, that uh, means these two are going into a discard pile. We'll put that over here, put that right here, and we're done with that attack. And that is, unfortunately, the end of Nahias's turn. We didn't kill anything. That sucks. Now we're going to go to Gita. Now, my understanding of this card is it is a one-time effect. So the active hero and all mobs spawn gain a token. So the frozen chamber froze them over, but it's not going to stop Gita, I don't think. So we are going to... Um, we're going to take a, her first of three actions. We're going to take a move action. We're going to go one, two. Now, she can't use any of her abilities yet because she doesn't hasn't taken any damage. Uh, for her second action, she can do another move. We're going to pick this up, this token, which is going to be a um, um, an item of rare quality. So we're going to draw that out. This gets... Uh, I don't think that uh, goes in the... I think it goes back in the bag, if I'm not mistaken. I'll check that out. Um, but let's uh, draw a card. Oh, a cuirass. Oh, look at that. Three defense. Well, I can tell you right now, there's no restriction on, on Gita wearing big giant armor, so the, that's going to go into the backpack, and this is going into the armor slot. Now, whenever you draw new items, you can swap items around like that. And that was great. Three defense on an attack, and that's good because she's about to leap in. So that was... Um, the first movement point of her second action, then she's going to move into here and go crazy. So that was the end of her second action. Now for her third action, she is going to attack the mob. Uh, she has no damage, so she can't particularly use any of her Blood Rage abilities or anything like that. So she's just going to get an orange die on the attack. And of course, there's two mobs there like this. So we'll roll. Um, and the orange die comes from the, the Crude Curious. Now, no defense, because I'm not the defender, I'm the attacker. Hopefully we get nothing. I don't have any re-rolls or anything like that. We do have health potions, but I think we're okay. What do we get here? Oh my gosh, that could not have been worse. That was the worst roll possible, I believe. Absolute worst roll possible. So, um, here's the thing. We did no damage at all. We got a blank on our card. I have no re-rolls that I'm looking. I have no way to re-roll this. But... Um, I do. I can uh, take a wound to deal one wound to the defender, which would kill one. So I'm definitely going to use a special ability. It says attack, take one wound, deal one wound to the defender. Okay, that means we will do four, but we missed everything else. Now here's the problem. I not only am I going to. Um, <laughs> this is awful. When they attack me, it's, oh, this is only on their attack. So that claw doesn't do anything uh, in this in his defense. So I just take two more health. So I'm going to take one more, and then I got to break my five down. That that was really pathetic, actually. It was horrible. And I'm going to be down to four again, just like good old uh, um, 
Nahias. Okay. Um, that was bad, but we did kill one of these guys, which means there's going to be one less black die in the pool. And that means that uh, uh, Gita is going to get an experience point. Okay, so we're going to see this go up by a whopping one. we got to get to five to get to the second level. So we're quite a ways away from that, and we're kind of hurt, but we do have... Uh, uh, three points in the pool, our Blood Rage pool, to be able to do things now. That is good. We can actually change stances at any time the cost of a wound, but I don't want to take Gita down any farther, even though Gita's got a good defense. All right, well, let's do this. Let's go now to... Uh, that is going to be the end of Gita's turn. Unfortunately, that was really bad. I was hoping to maybe get two of those guys out of there with this ability, but we didn't. So now there, um, there is... No more damage on the mob. I, I killed one of the mobs and we're back to zero. Now we're going to go on to, I think that's it for the hero phase, just to double check. Yes, now we're going to go on the enemy phase. It says activate each mob and roving monster in the dungeon separately. The mob activation performs two actions. So that means we're going to get two attacks because they don't have to go anywhere. Okay, well in the attack back, we're going to get one yellow die for the sword that the captain has. We're only going to have one more black die in there. That's good. And we're going to get three whopping defense dice. Though, I, I don't know how helpful that's going to be, uh, because the only thing damage we can stop is from the yellow die. So this is the first attack back from the mob. What do we get? Uh, again, we got the absolute worst case scenario, I think, for us, just about. Well, so this is blocked. We are going to take one unstoppable damage and their ability triggers, which means they're going to roll a yellow die, but the mob takes two wounds. So we roll another yellow die. Let's see what they get. Um, okay, well, good news there. This, these are completely blocked, so the only damage we're going to take is from there. And the boss, the mob, takes two wounds because of the special ability, so that their extra attack hurts them. They damage their body like they're ripping out their own arm to swing at, it, swing at her or something. But she is now down to three health already. That is really rough. And then we get to do that again, except this die is not there, so we're going to roll again. Hopefully we don't roll quite that good. Nope, it's just going to be their claw attack. Look at that defense. I doubt we're going to get hit. Let's roll. Uh, so it's three hits, but we stopped four damage on those dice. So that means that Gita took no damage from the second attack. That is great. Okay. But the guess what? This guy dies. Because when they did that extra attack, they took two more. So the only thing left is the captain. Now, since uh, I could have killed... No, I couldn't have. Never mind. I was saying I do have the ability with the, the Berserker, but I would have had to change stances. So anyway, that was that was the round. So we're down to three health with um, with Nias, or sorry, with uh, Gita, and four health with Nias at the end of the attack round. The, the mob has taken both of their attacks. It's the enemy phase. So now we're going to go to level up phase, and we're going to check that. Nothing happens in the level up phase because we don't have five experience points. The only person who's got an experience point is Gita. Now, we're not likely to level up in this scenario. We'll see if we do or not. Uh, then we're going to go to the darkness phase. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to advance the darkness track to two, and you can see that nothing happens at that point. So now normally we would look, we would spawn mobs if that was a requirement, but there isn't one. Uh, we would spawn roaming monsters if that was a requirement, if, but there isn't one. And in this case, I think the only thing we can spawn is, a, a well, we would spawn a roaming monster here, and we would spawn another uh, mob there, but we're not. We're probably not going to have to do that. There are no mob tokens, no mob locations on the board left, and that Minacurus did come in handy in those attacks. That was worth it. All right. So next up, we're going to go back around and continue our next round with our two characters. We're going to flip their tokens back over, and we get to take some more hero actions. That was some pretty good combat right there, uh, and I think I got it right. But I'm sure you'll tell me if I didn't. But I'm pretty sure I got it right. We got to, uh, we might have to, to heal up uh, Nias. I don't want Nias to, or actually, sorry, Gita. Gita's in worse shape. I mean, Nias only took one damage so far. But still, the range thing kind of bugs me. I don't know how you feel about that. But it is what it is. Keeps the game competitive and hard, or challenging and hard. So I'll, I'll just not complain about that. Okay, in this turn, I think we're going to start with Gita. Let's, uh, let's take a turn with her and get her uh, going right away because she's going to attack the boss, which makes some sense. Now, we do have uh, things to spend here, which uh, I'm going to do with her Blood Rage ability. So we're going to take our first of three actions. Our first action is going to be an attack, so we're going to build the dice pool. Now, there are no other mobs to fight, so it's just going to be the boss's yellow die from the weapon. And then, of course, if we roll, uh, we won't be rolling any of these dice. There's no uh, capability for the mobs to get any additional dice in the pool. Um, we are going to be rolling um, 
uh, let's see. Uh, we, we're going to be rolling our three defense dice, and I think I'm going to use spend a blood rage point. Why the heck not? To um, now that does not go back, does not become health again. I have to heal to do that, but does allow us. I'm going to use this actually to get one bonus, one more bonus die in there. And um, sorry, the boss is not getting that. We're <laughs> I'm doing this backwards, y'all. I will get it all figured out. The boss has no defense dice, right? So we're just yelling, uh, rolling two uh, yellow dice in the uh, attack here to see what, if we can kill the boss. We didn't do four more points. And, uh, you know, I actually messed up. The boss should not have, or they should not have gotten two attacks last turn, but uh, we'll let it go. Um, we got three attacks there. Do I want to do any re-rolls or just want to take a second attack? No, we'll just leave that alone. Actually, actually, I can uh, use her special, not to the defender. Yeah, I can use her special ability to attack to do one wound. That'll put me at two, though. Ugh, that's rough. We're going to have to stop and heal for an action. But we are going to do four points to the mob boss and execute it. Now, when you kill a, a the captain of a boss, um, i got to remember, uh, let me look up mobs. Uh, yeah, making a few mistakes. Sorry, we'll get it right uh, as I go through the game. So 10, 17, and 13. So page 10, I want to look up the mobs and see if... Um, when we kill it, I, there's something about experience in here. I think we get extra experience. Hey, we get one, but um, yeah, gonna have to keep going. I think when we kill a mob, what do we do when we kill a mob? All right, no, nothing's ever that easy to find. Sometimes, right? I know you get one, but let me just go. Maybe it's under experience. Experience twenty. Page twenty. We talk about experience. Where's that? Uh, it is not on page 20. That is a, a flat-out lie. Where's the experience? Um, okay, I'm going to have to go off. I thought I could do this on, on camera with you guys and find the right spot in the rulebook, but I can't. Okay, I found it. So, Gita is going to get one for the death blow and then two more for killing the captain. So, she'll be at four, and that puts um, Nahias at two because she gets two for the, the death of the, the boss, the mob captain. So, okay, that ends. that is action number one for Gita. Action number two is going to be simple. We're going to take another move action. We're going to pop this door. Now, again, we don't draw another door card. We're going out into a hallway we would already exposed. So we're going to go, that's going to be action number two. Then action number three is going to go to here. We're going to face off at that, that section of the hallway right there. All right, that is all three actions for Gita. Good job, Gita. Now, we're going to take the actions for Nahias. Nahias is taking a move action, so first move action is going to be to go there. To pick up this token, and I just checked it, is actually a move action. So that means with three points of the move action, Gita is going to be able to get to here. Oh, I also forgot to do two things with the mob. Sorry, got to catch up on this too. We're going to get this. Um, do I want this or not? Now, um, I think we're going to stow it. I don't think attack, if you took at least one wound in this attack, deal one wound to the defender. That's pretty good. But the axe is an orange die. Oh, you know, I rolled two yellow dice on my attack, too. Man, I'm just screwing up all the way around. But it's okay. I'll get used to it. I think that I'm going to put this in our backpack. We're not going to use that uh, uh, that item. But there was also a um, common item in the bag. So we are also going to have um, a draw in the common item deck. So again, I want to remind you, this is my learning experience. I have not played at all. I'm learning with you so that I can play a bigger scenario for you. Uh, we got this uh, serrated axe. Now that looks pretty good. That is, oh man, okay, we're definitely swapping this one out, right? Attacks ignore one of the claws. Uh, attack, ignore one of the claws. The defender suffers it instead of you. And it's an orange and yellow die. Oh my gosh, what a killer weapon. We're going to get rid of the crude axe and put that in our hands instead. That was actually out of the common item pool. Was that a mistake? No. Nope. Though I do see that one of the rare items did make its way into that deck. Took that out. But that, that is a common item. That is a pretty powerful common item. If we have to deal with a wandering monster, which we probably will, then that will be very effective. Okay, that was action number one. Action number two. I, we're not going to be able to get to. We're not going to be able to stop that token. Get this token this turn. But we are going to go one, two three, and that's that. That's action number two. Action number three is going to be go to here, but it requires an action to pick up that last token according to the scenario instructions. 
and we'll double check just to be sure. This is closing the rift. Any hero holding the scroll, now we do know that, that uh, Nahias is holding the scroll, um, may spend one action while there. So we, it took us too many actions to get there. So we're going to end Nias' turn there. That's it. You know, when I went by there, I could have done taken a movement point to do a trade action. Uh, nah. Um, those weapons are cool, but, uh, you know, I, I'd rather have Nahias uh, Nahi using the bow. So, just in case. And then we're going to go on to uh, the next round. So we're going to look at the experience. Well, we still didn't go up in experience. Uh, Gita is at four, and Nahias did not get enough experience. Maybe we'll do that in the, before the end of the next round. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go then. That's the experience phase. Nothing happened there. We're going to go to the darkness phase. This is going to tick up, and you see that we have a wandering monster coming into the, a roaming monster coming into the game. Let's see what that roaming monster is going to be out of these cards here. We're not, we're probably, we don't have to fight it because we're going to be able to finish this scenario and I'm going to be able to move on to something more interesting, but let's see what we get. Uh, Etheria and the Undead Queen is going to appear. That is interesting, and so we will um, get her out. Now, they, she, wandering monsters, roaming monsters don't get an item like the mob items do, they are they have special items with them. Like, I'll go over her card real quick, and we'll get her miniature on the board, though I don't think, I may or may not choose to fight her. I might try with a Nile, with um, with uh, Gita, and just see if we can knock her down, but we're at two health, so a little careful about that. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so here we are with this. We're going to... So we, we spur first off in the darkness phase, we, we would have activated monsters, but there weren't any to activate, right? So we're already past that phase. This means that there's going to be two random treasures and one guaranteed um, rare treasure. She has four health per player, so it's going to be eight health. Her defense is one uh, blue, one black die, and she has a bunch of skills. She has a, a melee attack of one um, yellow die and a range attack of two a yellow and one black, so we definitely want to get into melee. Well, there's some strat strategy around melee and ranged. Uh, if it, we want to get in ranged with her, if there's more than one hero in line of sight, Etheria attacks each hero in line of sight. Resolve each attack separately. If there's only one hero, Etheria gains a plus one orange dice, and her claw does something special. So let's uh, let's grab her. Let's see where she is. I think this is her right here. It is. This is. Etheria, the Undead Queen, she is going to appear right here on this bridge at the portal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but that is going to actually end that round. We're going to go back around then and start a new turn. All right, let's do it. Let's try and blow her up with Gita. we got to get eight health to her. I don't know how we'll do that yet exactly. But we do get to do some cool things. So I think for uh, Gita's first action, she's going to have to move. So she'll move into the space with uh, the... Um, uh, with Yathenia, uh, Yathenia, I think it is. And then, uh, second action. Now, we still have a partial move action. I could change stances, but I don't want to. So, for the second action, we are going to attack. Now, this is a... Uh, so, mobs are different, right? So, we know that her melee attack is a yellow die, but that doesn't matter. All we're worried about in here is her defense die. Her defense is going to be, unfortunately also includes a black die. So we're going to jump in there and attack her with that. Our attack is going to be a yellow and an orange. And I can take a damage to add a yellow die to that, I think. Or not a damage, but use one of our rage to do that. That puts... I'm still only at two health. This could go bad for us, right? Um, but that's going to give us a, an additional yellow. And I got three blood rage left. So I still have the ability to do some rerolls if I want to. Uh, that's a pretty good dice pool right there, right? Of course, I could take unstoppable damage, and if she gets her her attack, it says all minions on the mo uh, all minions to add one. To, uh, blah, blah, blah. If she gets her claw, she's going to add one to minions, okay, <laughs> or one to mobs. But she's not. We don't have any mobs, so that's not going to matter. Um, if there there is more than one hero in line of sight, so she's not attacking yet, though. This is our. We're hoping to kill her before she kills us. Oh man, that was beautiful. Look at her defense dice sucked. Her black die was blank. That's three, four, five. I can take a wound to deal uh, damage, or I can just wait till the next attack. I think we just do five points of damage to, to her this turn. Bam! 
five points, nothing going on there, and then we're going to attack again. So we'll have the same dice pool. Um, I will use another rage to get that plus one. And uh, we're, we still only have two health though, so we've got to make this count. Okay, nothing, oh, this is perfect, look at this. So we're gonna block, she blocked one, she got nothing here, we got four more, that's enough to kill her. We killed her in one shot. Now what happens when you kill, and I didn't even get the treasures out because it's not gonna matter much. Uh, we are going to get two random treasures. We'll see what those are, and one guaranteed um, rare. So two random treasures are gonna be uh, two, uh, a common and a rare, so common and two rare is what's gonna come out of this, um, this uh, encounter, and then we're going to end it, because we're going to about to end this scenario. Anyway, I think I managed to get through that and not, and at least realize my mistakes, which is helpful. Uh, man, that, she was a lot easier to kill than I thought she'd be with that, uh, that serrated axe. That thing is crazy. And remember, I, if we did come up with one of these, the axe also has a special ability uh, that, uh, and we're in darkness too. I could have gained three health. I could have, yeah, well, I, I, oh, man, I did it again. Should have rolled the shadow die. Let's see what happened on the first one. Nothing. Second one. Sorry, shadow die. Where's the shadow die? There. First one, I would have got my shadow ability and would have healed back. Okay, so that would have been good. I would have gotten the... because Because I'm in darkness there. Or on the bridge. I don't know if the bridge counts. I'm going to say it doesn't. I'll have to look it up. But let's see. We get a rare a ring, a runic ring, action, move one mob in line of sight, one zone. Okay, so he would have taken that. Why the heck not? And then we would have gotten two common treasures. We would have wanted to trade some of this stuff. This is a larger adventure. We would have wanted to trade it off with, with some things off with knives. Uh, throwing knives, we definitely would have wanted to trade those off. Deal three enemy, enemy, three wounds to an enemy in line of sight. And then a sprint potion, immediately move two zones. That's pretty good stuff for common items. Man, I cannot believe this is a common item. That thing is nasty. Allowed us to kill uh, a wandering monster in two hits. Bam, bam, just like that. That is crazy. Okay, and so that's going to end Gita's turn. Gita's on the bridge here. I don't know if that would have counted in shadows or not, so let's just say it didn't. I have to look up the bridges and see if they count in shadows. Now, we do have this token, so for action number one, um, now we would have gotten experience and leveled up. I'm not going to worry about that because there's no point. We we killed, uh, the, we killed a, a wandering monster. We would have gotten um, in the level up phase, um, Gita would have leveled up for sure. I guess I could do that, show you that. But I think you get the, the point of it. Uh, we're going to put a common, a rare token in the bag uh, for each of the characters that level up. And we're going to get an extra health. And we're going to get to pick an extra skill of level 2 or lower, another skill. So I think we'll wait until we're playing a bigger scenario of that. But we do pick that up as an action. And we destroy the gate. And that's going to mark the end of that scenario. So this was my test run. Please, I, I did catch some things i got to be careful of. I'm, making, I'm going to take some notes for myself. Make sure I'm doing it right in the bigger scenario. But that's, this gets us started. So that was a little, uh, a few rounds of me learning um, uh, Massive Darkness 2. I, I, like I said, I think I caught all the mistakes I, I made. I did make a few. I think I caught them. I still don't know about the bridge. Let's take a look at the bridges and see if a bridge is count, counts in darkness or if it even tells us if it does or not. We'll see. Uh, bridge. There's no uh, thing for bridges. Hmm. Maybe the pillars, all that other stuff. You think they have bridges? I thought I saw something in here about bridges. I'm going to take a look. There it is. Bridges. Bridges are tokens that function as an extra zone. Bridges are placed one ad um, adjacent to one of the tile zones. Bridges are shadow zones. Okay, so I would have gotten that ability, and Gita on that second attack would have healed three, three damage back. That's pretty good. All right. Well, there you have it, y'all. Uh, first, first round of t testing out uh, Massive Darkness Two. We're gonna get into something else. I don't know. I'd like, a, I want to play one of the campaigns. Um, there are in the main book. There aren't really. I mean, you can play them in. A, I think you can play them in a um, series, a scenario series and it will get you basically through a campaign. I'll look at that, but I want to play, like there's two, there's a couple of campaigns that I got with the, the game. Um, I got, uh, you know, the uh, Four Horsemen, um, the, I think it's, yeah, Demon, Demon Dragon, the big campaign, the, the one with all the angels and everything, Heavenfall, yeah, I got, a, I got that, and I'm thinking about doing that, and so let me know if you have an opinion on that as well, and we'll see you in the next video. So take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.